So I feel like a lot of brands come from a place where they're like, well, I love this mustard. This mustard I make is the best mustard. And here are the five key benefits of my mustard. It's got the most grains and it's got, and it's organic and it's got a bottle that has a vacuum design. NASA made the bottle so that you always get all the mustard out of this thing. And it's like, they love their product and they should. I'm sure it's a great mustard, but like, you gotta find something people care about. Maybe it's humor. Like right now, I just saw like, I can't believe it's not butter is doing this campaign where they're making, I can't believe it's not butter fake movie posters. <laughs> like where it'll be like yeah. a James Bond thing. And it's, I can't believe it's not but like, uh, I can't believe it's not Bond. I don't know. The James Bond thing, you get it. Pay me to come Man. up with the joke. I'll just come up with the premise. But I like what they're doing where they're like making posters for like, I can't believe it's not butter romantic comedies and action films. Cause it's like, don't care about a margarine replacement. <laughs> but I do want to laugh while I'm on Twitter. And the other thing that I like is that it's like, well, I kind of already know what this thing is. I already know what I can't believe it's not butter is. So you mm -hmm. don't really have to waste a bunch of time giving me the 15 key benefits of how it lowers your cholesterol. It's got less calories, less fat, this and that. No, I get it. So spend less. If you spend less time selling me on the thing. You spend more time like giving me something I want, making me laugh during my day. I'm stuck at the DMV. Let me scroll through the thing and I see a funny thing with uh, the butter guy and there's a thing with the butter. And uh, now, I don't know, the next time I'm in the next time in the supermarket, I might kind of subconsciously remember that you made me laugh and you made me smile that one time. Maybe I will try your butter. When you're positioning something from a social media perspective, how do you sell that internally to a team that's only ever written about themselves? Well, I mean, the first thing is you have to try your best and you have to know that ultimately they may not go for it. But the thing is, I what I like to do is meeting theater, where it's you walk in there and you put your best foot forward. I think a way to sell in like a concept or a campaign that is a little bit out of a client's comfort zone is mm -hmm. to use other existing cases that the marketplace has proven like a couple of years ago hamburger helper made a rap album mixtape and <laughs> like hamper like and so everybody wrote about it and so you can go to your client or your boss and you can be like here's what hamburger helper did here's what taco bell did with this hotel here's what kentucky fried chicken did where they made it they they put the colonel sanders's face in the desert and it was so big you could see it from space and like you can show them the coverage and then you can obviously talk business. But ultimately, what I think you need to do is you need to get them excited about the potential because your heart is the first thing to say yes to something. Like you see the thing, you fall in love with the thing. What I don't like is when people go to pitch an idea and they have 15 slides about this one idea. It's like, Yo, by slide two, the client might be like, we're not doing this. And so right. like, now you're just wasting their time with these other 13 slides about, oh, and here's the channel strategy. And oh, here's the media buy. And here's the this. And here's the potential headline. Oh, I hate that when they're like, here's the headlines you might get. And they like mock up headlines uh, yeah. like it's a Spider-Man cartoon and there's something spinning towards a thing. What I like to do is go to a meeting with a client or my boss and pitch them a couple of ideas as like one or two sliders. Cause then now you're talking and it's now they're rolling the idea around in their head and they're pitching something back. A good idea finds the money or the will or the logistics. They don't like the idea of the logistics are like, who cares about the logistics? How do you source your ideas? Do you talk about competitive analysis or, co or cohort analysis? But I know a big piece of that for you comes from community management and, and learning so, about so, what types well, of things do you do for well, that? Mm -hmm. Just to jump back to something yeah, you sure. said, like an old boss of mine said, you can never go to the client and be like, do this idea because trust me, like yeah. do this idea because I want to do it. It's just, that's such a, that's like such a weak position to be a, if, if you can't get them to fall in love with the idea or see the value of it, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. I like to go into meetings and pitch big because look, there's a really good chance that you're, 
it's not it's just not going to happen and it it's probably not a flaw in the idea or your pitch or your presentation it's just like someone somewhere up the line suddenly a million dollars disappeared you know what i mean mm-hmm. or someone somewhere up the line got a promotion and now there's a new person and they're looking for this and so you can't take this stuff personally but here's the thing i like about just a couple of slides you go in strong and then you spend the rest of the time listening and talking mm-hmm. look you're probably not going to sell this one but maybe the next next one is the one you're going to sell and now they know that there's a person who like cares and gives a crap and is bringing us what maybe the thing we didn't ask for, but the thing that maybe we didn't know we needed. And then, by the way, also bringing them the thing they asked for. That's another thing I hate when it's like someone comes in with 12 ideas from Mars and it's like, yeah, we would never do this. And it seems like maybe you just don't like your job and you're just like, inventing this like fictional universe in a bunch of slides to entertain yourself on a Tuesday night in Google Docs. It's bring them something they're going to love and something they asked for. Bring them something crazy and bring them something in the middle. Because eventually you will get that crazy thing. If it's a pre-roll on YouTube, you've got like those three seconds before they can hit the skip button. It's like you have to hook them then. So whatever you're doing... If you can't explain it in three or four words to somebody who has no idea what your brand is and no idea what you're talking about, like, it's probably not going to work. And, like, you should probably come up with the simplest possible idea that even if it's even if it's not as exciting to you as this, like, big lore filled giant thing you've worked on that has that when there's a book oh and there's a qr code oh and it has a podcast and it's like yeah i don't care if you, it's like the thing that will stop you mid scroll is the thing that is simple which is why again like celebrities and like influencers i know that guy it's oh i know ryan reynolds okay he's talking about phones huh okay oh he's yeah. talking about whiskey huh oh he's talking about this huh it's okay well, i've stopped like again that is so simple. Like, I know that guy. I like that guy. And if you don't have, obviously, you, you probably don't have the money for a celebrity or an influencer. You have to come up with something, again, that is that simple. If there is something happening in the culture right now that you could credibly talk about that people already mm-hmm. know, then that will stop them. You know what I mean? I think that's why, like, a lot of brands do, like, memes and things like that. Because it's like, hey, I know that meme. It's, hey, I know that thing. Hey, I know that. And you'll get them to stop. And then it's, okay, now we'll talk a little bit about us. That's the hook. But the difficult part is, like, finding a way to talk, finding a way to lead with something that people already understand, but that hasn't Mm -hmm. been talked about to death. And I think that's where, like, analytics people and like strategists like you come in because they like help you find out what is just about to crest what is on the horizon that we can link ourselves to i'm writing a blog what are ways that i can freeze people make them make the decisions that i want them to make in line with my blogs with blogs real quick and again i don't think i'm going to tell you something that you don't know if i start to read the blog and i can tell that it was written entirely for seo purposes i'm going to get mad at you and i'm never going to come back the other day i was trying to google what happened on the euphoria finale because it's like Mm -hmm. do i want to watch euphoria no i get scared i don't like to see teenagers in danger it's not relaxing for me i like to watch bob's burgers i like to watch a show where you can just kind of chill out But as a comedian, I kind of do need to know what happened in the Euphoria finale. And so I Google it, and one of the first things is a blog, and I'm reading it, and it's like, what happened in the Euphoria finale? Good question. A lot of people are asking, what happened in the Euphoria finale? And I'm like, ah, I can't, I'm I'm never going back to you. You tricked me, you fooled me. Now look, if you're doing SEO entirely just to climb up the Google rankings, and you're just kind of trying to, spam a lot of blog content out there god bless you that's how a lot of that's how a lot of comedians get paid by writing all these blogs 
well, do try to also make it good. It takes right. so it just takes a tiny bit more effort to make it good. Like mm -hmm. you'd be amazed. Just like one more draft. Hey, instead of the content mill you've hired, instead of getting 20 garbage articles, how about you pay him for 10 good ones and see how things work out with that?